Good morning. Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo. I'm here at Airfield Falls in Fort Worth, Texas. I thought I'd come down and see what kind of composition I could line up. I've been to this location many times. And uh, I've captured, matter of fact, one of my favorite images here. But uh, I wasn't expecting a lot of water and, well, I didn't get much. But I think it comes down to a finding composition that you're happy with. And, and I think that comes down to really searching and, and looking and, and evaluating a scene. Just making the most of, of any scene that you're at I think is super important for a landscape photographer. So I really scoured the area looking for compositions and, and I think that's the, uh, the right approach. When you're, certainly when, when your expectations aren't met, but, um, but in this particular case I, I really knew that there wasn't going to be any, any great amount of water flowing over this uh, this fall because we just haven't had enough rain. But I figured I could find something. So as usual, I, I get up early and I think that's uh, pretty important, getting up early and getting to a scene and really scoping out the area, searching hard for that composition. And uh, there's always beauty. Even in the Fort Worth area, there's beauty. You just have to find it. And, uh, and, and again, as the old saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But there's more to it than just beauty. There's a story to be told. And landscape photography is about telling a story. And that's exactly, I think, what we do when we go out with our camera. It's all part of the experience, as I often say. And enjoying the morning is part of it. Enjoying any scene that you're at. Taking in the views. Taking in every moment. Looking for those images that, that speak to us. That tell the story the way we want it told. And that's my goal. And sometimes I get on a location and I think, ah, yeah, I probably should have stayed in bed. And, uh, but then I'm reminded. I'm reminded of the beauty of nature. and I'm reminded that, you know, it's all about getting out and enjoying yourself and being part of nature. And I think that, uh, I think I could be back in bed, but, uh, you know, I think I'd rather be here around the sound of nature and running water, kind of drowning out the neighboring, nearby city of Fort Worth. So, yeah, I think I'd rather be here, image or no image. And we'll see, I'm trying to line up something here, so not much to choose from. I was considering a composition kind of zooming in on what little waterfall there is. And I've photographed this area before with a pretty good sky and a uh, really, really uh, kind of magnificent amount of water flowing over this this uh, unique area, one of the, the few remaining waterfalls in Fort Worth. Kind of a somewhat of a man-made but natural waterfall. Yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, captured that image and really, uh, really like this one. Uh, show it right here. Just a, just a really nice image. One of my favorites. So uh, obviously, I'm not going to get that today. But uh, keep looking around and see what I can do. Maybe I'll zoom in on just this one section of the waterfall. I don't know if you could see it, but kind of right there. And uh, go with the long lens and see what I can do with that. You know, when there's really no, no main subject, no just aha moment. Oh, that's the composition. That's it. I think you really got to, you got to look hard to kind of find the beauty. And certainly in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you got to look hard to kind of find the beauty. But um, I don't know, sometimes I think it forces you to, to really dig deep and to uh, try to isolate kind of zoom in, focus in on smaller details of an area. Now, I was considering a couple compositions here, actually, some of this uh, kind of the cobblestone here. I think you could see that. And uh, maybe including that in some of the image. There's some, some uh, kind of overhanging brush right there and some of the cobblestone. I was considering a composition on that, so. Yeah. I think you just have to make the most of, uh, of what you have. And never lose sight of 
really what landscape photography is truly all about. And that's getting out in nature and really enjoying yourself. It's a beautiful morning and I'm really enjoying it. No image or image or no image. Yeah, when it comes right down to it, I think you really have to be mindful of, of the composition itself, composing elements of an image. And, you know, for example, I mean, this rock formation here is, uh, you know, could be included in on the image and, um, you know, maybe properly placed in the image when you're thinking about the rule of thirds and how to place your subject and elements of interest, leading lines, reflections, all of these things are, are, are something to consider when you're trying to line up a composition. And um, I think it's uh, best to just take a moment and, and kind of look for all those elements and move around and try to figure out how you're gonna pull, pull it all together. So, or, or if it's just not gonna work at all. But that's, uh, I think that's one of the really interesting and captivating things about landscape photography is it's kind of the art, the art of photography, the art of, of composing the image. And really trying to pull elements of a composition together to make something that, that is just, you know, magnificent, interesting, pulls a viewer in. And, and, you know, when someone looks at your image and says, oh, wow, that's fantastic. Wow, where did you get that at? How did you compose that? Can I go see that place? Yeah, I think those are things that, you know, it really just, uh, I think, I think it certainly captures my atten attention. And when someone's looking at my image and they say, whoa, wow, man, what were you thinking when you did that? Wow, that's fantastic. You know, you just have those moments where it's just uh, a, a kind of a, I don't know, a, a reassurance or a, um, a moment in which someone kind of validates your, your thinking, your process, your, your uh, creativity. And uh, I think we all seek that validation in some way. Um, and, uh, but, but truly, I think there's only one person that has to be happy with your image, and that's you. I definitely think there's an image to be had here. Maybe not this time, but uh, I think with some flowing water, kind of on this end, yeah. yeah I think I can really make uh, something out of this, provided this area isn't flooded out. I don't know about this time, but maybe next time. I think that's going to be my composition right there. I'm going to try to kind of zoom in on, on that area right there. And uh, I'm really thinking this kind of this lower fall right here to the bottom left of the, of the frame and you know, that upper fall in the upper right section to kind of bring some balance to the image. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Let me grab the camera. You know, another thing to always be mindful of is when you're scoping out an area, you never really know what's going to be part of your composition. And so the actual ground that I'm walking on could be part of my composition. So it's best not to trample through the water or if you had snow or or maybe sand and you trample through those areas and then you end up having to contend with your footprints uh, in your image. So best not to do that. That way you don't have to Photoshop it out later. Kind of another composition I was toying with is kind of right here and some of the trees and maybe if I had a better sky. And I need those branches right there to be a little bit fuller. That might be okay. I could use some more water in the falls here. I like not being rushed. And, you know, I much prefer to get up early and get out to a location and um, kind of get set up and, 
you know, I, my composition and that way I'm not rushed. I'm not, I'm not fighting the light, but rather waiting for the light. And I'd certainly rather do that. Always make sure your VR is off your lens. In last week's video, I talked about sunrise versus sunset, and which one was better. And um, but, but really, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, whichever one you're shooting. What does matter, though, is getting to the scene early, whether that's a sunrise or a sunset. You don't want to be fumbling around, with the light quickly approaching, trying to compose your image, and messing with tripods and getting set up. So the best thing is to, to be early, arrive at the scene early, get your gear out, get your lens on your camera, walk around the scene, canvas the area, find your composition, give yourself time to get settled and get everything lined up and, and be ready to take the image. Well, on something like this, focus could be tricky. And, you know, I certainly don't want to leave here with this not sharp. So something to think about here is um, hyperfocal distance. And so I would say that uh, right now, I'm shooting at about 110, 112 millimeters. And that puts me, by my app here, uh, at, at F11, at 110 millimeters, the hyperfocal distance is 121 feet. That means that I'm gonna get everything sharp from basically 60 feet, half of the hyperfocal distance, half the distance to infinity. Now that's acceptably sharp, and I think I've talked about this before, but basically my definition of acceptably sharp is about an eight to 12 inch image hanging on the wall and someone standing there at a normal distance to observe it, and, it, and the image looks sharp in print. So, uh, you can you can shoot to the hyperfocal distance and take your chances but acceptably sharp and super sharp they are two different things so in the digital world why take a chance um, i can simply focus on the foreground and the background maybe even a mid-ground maybe three exposures here uh, and i can do more if i want and just uh, make sure that when i get back in post-processing if there is a sharpness issue, I can blend those images together, focus stack them, and really, uh, yeah, make everything sharp. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, another thing about shooting to uh, hyperfocal distance is you know, you're really guessing. Uh, so, so there's acceptably sharp when, when focusing to the hyperfocal distance, and then you're also kind of guessing too at the distance. So I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm roughly guessing that, that that the bottom edge of the waterfall, the last waterfall is about 60, 50, 60 feet. So shooting to 120 feet uh, gives me that distance, basically my entire waterfall, acceptably sharp. So, uh, but uh, nevertheless, I'm capturing a, a couple exposures here. I like the composition. I think it's okay. I don't think it's spectacular, but I do like the, the layers in the image and kind of how they stack up. And then I like the, uh, the offset falls as they kind of progressively move up in kind of a leading line uh, format. And, and my vision is that the viewer kind of looks at the image and, and would probably start at the base of the image and work their way up through the leading lines and the layers moving them through the image at least that's uh, the vision of uh, that i have in my mind of how someone would would view the image but uh, i don't know you let me know is that right is that how you view the image so uh so we'll see i don't think it's a spectacular image but uh yeah it's okay probably going to capture a couple more of the you know, the lower section of the falls here kind of zoom in a bit more and see what i can do with that kind of uh 
more of a minimalistic picture of it but but just really by 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 zooming in i just kind of crop those waterfalls uh the, the back and the front together and uh just kind of fill the frame more with the waterfall and uh yeah, we'll see how that one looks too you know, I noticed something about myself. When I take a series of images, different compositions, I always tend, usually, like, like probably 99% of the time, I always favor the first image in the series that I capture. And so I, I think that's, um, I think that has to do with showing up to a scene and you're really spending a lot of time looking hard for that initial composition. When you find it, it tends to be the right one, at least in my experience anyway. That doesn't mean that some of the uh, subsequent images that you capture can't be spectacular or, or that they're not spectacular. Just, just find that mine are not as good as the, uh, as the first one I captured, or at least I, I favor the first one. Just uh, little things you notice about yourself as, as a photographer. Well, I guess that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and end the video, but uh, hey, if you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, Maybe I'll see you on the trail. Well, this is the first image I'd captured, and as I'd suspected, it was my favorite. I really like the leading lines provided by the water. I like the texture, and I really like the layers. Although I don't think these are award-winning images, overall I was pretty happy with them. I really liked the compositions and I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the journey. This was the second image that I'd captured and, and I like it, but uh, not quite as much as the first and probably because there's not as many layers in the image. But nevertheless, I do like it and I really enjoyed this trip. <laughs>